Hello and welcome to the special edition of the Golf Channel Podcast with Rex and Lav. We're inside Rex. Last night we were outdoors. It was lovely. Uh, Chamber of Commerce Day. Today, not so much. It was blustery not in the so morning much. and now it is absolutely dumping. Play was suspended uh, at about 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time on Friday. Afternoon wave has not finished. They will resume second round play. The Players' Championship at 7 a.m. Eastern Time on Saturday. Quite a leaderboard, Rex, to say the least. Uh, it is eclectic. Christian Bezadenho and Adam Svensson tie for lead at eight under par. Ben Griffin, at least, in the clubhouse at six under par. Not sure that's going to last until uh, Saturday because conditions obviously will be much softer. Wind is supposed to die down. What's your initial impressions as we sit here on Friday night? Uh, here at TPC Sawgrass. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the leaderboard is, we talked about this last night. It's eclectic is probably a nice way of putting it. But you also have Colin Morikawa, who's right there. He's tied for third and has uh, about half of his round still to finish. Scotty Scheffler, again, half his round to finish. He's tied for six. So I think there's still that possibility that my column on Wednesday won't be completely wrong because I'm trending in that direction at a very, very alarmingly fast rate. But you're right. I think when guys come back tomorrow morning, it's going to be so much more user friendly than what they had this afternoon. I think I looked right before the rain delay horn was sounded and it was playing almost three strokes over par. Like it was impossible this afternoon. And we saw it. There were so many train wrecks today. I mean, it, they just kept piling up. And certainly what happened to Chad Remy on the 17th hole is the one I would probably go back and think to myself, yes, this is going to define the day. First round leader Chad Remy uh, shot a flawless. Eight under par, 64 on Thursday. Not not quite so flawless uh, on day two, including a quadruple bogey seven. Uh, hit two in the water on the island, 17th hole, tumble. Out of not even close Plus. to the highest score on that hole today. Not even close. Over under for Chad Ramey, top 25 finish. Yes or no? He's currently T8. Uh, no, I'm, I'm going to go no. Yeah, I mean, Chad's a, a nice story. He's a nice fella. I got to know him a little bit yesterday when I talked to him for the first time, but... It, the wheels started falling off. It, like I said, I mean, we talked about it. I mean, it's going to be easier in the morning, and maybe he can turn it around. But, man, it could, I, I can't imagine what that's like walking off the 17th green. And just oh, Everything man. is just imploded. He was up by three. He, went, he, was up by he, was three. Up by, he was up by three and then down by two before you could blink. I, I mean, it's the shortest hole on the golf course, and before he can get from the tee to the next tee, he's, he's down. It's a five-stroke swing. I mean, that, that's, it's going to stink. You've never been in this situation before. It's going to hurt. That's why I absolutely love this golf course. I think there's, what, all but one hole at TPC Sawgrass <laughs> Stadium course that has some sort of water in play. There's just so many possible calamities out there. And so when you get to Sunday, when the stakes are highest, when you're playing for, what, $4.5 million in the first place check, uh, and the pressure ratcheted up, uh, it is nonstop drama. I just can't wait to get to Sunday because right now it certainly does feel like a bit of a slog with this leaderboard. I'm still with you, Rex. I still think we're going to have a bold face winner. You mentioned Kyle Morikawa is just two shots off the lead, uh, has seven holes to play in his round. Scotty Scheffler sitting there uh, at five under par. He's actually one under for the day and has about 15-foot uh, eagle putt. That's actually where I was standing on the 11th hole uh, when the horns sound to suspend play. So I actually still think Scotty Scheffler. Bad timing on your part. In good position, yes. That is, and then I had to book it to the clubhouse. I did, Rex. I did get in uh, before the heavens opened up, which I was nice. quite pleased about. Uh, uh, and you, you wrote, write about uh, and why? Well, no, I wanted to touch on yours first because you go a little bit further down the leaderboard, and you did have something to say about Victor Hovland. He's currently tied for eight. He shot a seventy-one earlier in the day. A, a very, very good start. But what'd you make of that? Uh, it certainly could have been better, right? Like he was tied for the lead. He was eight under par. Uh, and then came home his last five holes. Uh, he was four over par. Currently sits at a tie for eighth, uh, but just four shots off the lead, two shots off the clubhouse lead. He's certainly an interesting story, Rex. I, I kind of got deep in the weeds with Fisher. Talked to him for about 10 minutes after his round. He was certainly uh, frustrated coming off the golf course. He felt like he was playing some really good golf and didn't necessarily have the scores to show it. But I wanted to get back to to his 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 patented shot he he plays a squeeze fade he's played it for as long as i've known him i covered uh him deep in amateur golf he plays that shot where it's it's just a five yard fade but he has total control it's reliable he knows it's coming uh and it is extremely powerful and a very good weapon he is back to hitting that shot he's switched uh swing coaches from jess smith to joe mayo better known as the track man maestro uh, out here on the pj tour those two think 
very similarly, very maths, math and physics oriented. They mesh together perfectly. Uh, Victor is kind of the guy who has like this insatiable hunger for more knowledge and instruction. And sometimes it can get a little Bryson-esque where he gets in himself into rabbit holes uh, and tries to figure out things that aren't necessarily broken. But in this case, they've certainly figured out the swing. They did some 3D imaging. I, I'm not going to explain it. It's very complicated. Go to GolfChannel.com nope. uh, for more on that. However, I think the bigger indicator, Rex, is Victor Hovland's short game. Last season, he was literally, literally one of the worst players on the PJ Tour around the greens. 191st out of 193 players he strokes gained around the green. Like, it's exceedingly rare to have a top player who has such a glaring deficiency in his game. And yet, the numbers still aren't great when it comes to Victor Hovland and his short game. But he believes now that he is on the right path. Joe Mayo certainly has him in the right direction. He's hitting closer to the golf ball. He's imparting more spin. He has more of a variety of shots. Again, numbers are not great. We're not going to lie to you there. Uh, but uh, he actually believes now that he has a foundation, something he can work with. And that's certainly going to be put to the test over the weekend with these exceedingly tight lies. Uh, some of these short sided shots that you're inevitably going to have at TPC Sawgrass. This is like the ultimate test for his faith in that squeeze cut. And certainly with nipping those, those pitch shots around the green. Hasn't his short game always been suspect though? This goes back to his earliest days on tour when, when he won very young and we, we wanted to anoint him. And this was the glaring weakness that he yep. had the four tools, but he wasn't he, the fifth tool was missing out of yep. the bag and he continues to look for it. But you're saying 15 breezy or 1400 breezy words on golfchannel.com today. You're claiming <laughs> mission accomplished. Is that what, that it, what you're telling me? I would, I would not say the breeze were very much getting lost uh, in the weeds <laughs> There's there's talks Check of that sternums. Out, folks. There's, yeah. there's talks of Check sternums and, pe and pelvises and and shoulder tilt. Like it, we're getting very very deep, uh, but I do think uh, at least some people will find. Uh, them, I think the swing wonks will certainly find that it is interesting. So so Victor told me to to your point there, Rex. Uh, this has always played him forever, but every instructor he's ever had said the fact that you have a bowed left wrist which is why you're such a great ball striker is the reason why you are not good around the greens. And Victor just fails to accept that premise. He said, look at Jordan Spieth, look at Dustin Johnson, look at Brooks Koepka. All three of those players reached world number one, became major champions with a bowed left wrist. And in Spieth's case, like he's one of the best around the ground. We're going to get, we're gonna get to his uh, chip in a free eagle to make the cut there. So they've done some things with his uh, setup. So he's not necessarily bottoming out behind the ball and he feels like he can actually clip it now he said if you if you said if you if we walked right now to the short game area at tpc sawgrass which is phenomenal you drop me off right there right now i would hit 100 perfect chip shots i would nip it every single time within a foot i didn't take him up on that challenge uh, which i probably should have because he was Shut pretty beat, he was pretty beat down after a five and a half hour round but he said the challenge then is going to the golf course and right now if i'm hitting 10 out of 10 shots with the risk variant on the practice area, it's getting to the golf course and hitting it 8 of 10 as opposed to 5 of 10. So it's it's just like building up the confidence, right, to actually play those shots. Again, the weekend at the Players' Championship is going to be telling. It's going to be an entirely stress fest. I think it's probably going to be easier at this heavy rains, uh, but that's what I'm really interested to see over the next 36 holes. Is there anything that you left out, or is that, is that all of the 1,400 breezy words, or is there more? Nope, you asked. You asked. Uh, you wrote, Rex, however, about the clubhouse leader here at the Players' Championship. I did. I talked about Ben Griffin yesterday. That's not who I want to talk about. I want to use my time to talk about Jason Day. You and I actually touched on this yesterday when it's amazing to think, and, and you don't want to say full circle because, I mean, he still has a, a good ways to get back to where he was before, but he has had an amazing consistent year when you consider he's moved all the way up to 43rd in the world. He continues to post decent scores week in and week out. I found it fascinating today after he finished up his round. And look, it's a, it's a round that included a, a double bogey in the middle of it, a couple of other bogeys sprinkled in. You could tell he was kind of beat up a little bit, but he talked about he hasn't been hitting the ball well, that he felt like his ball striking had been off and that it was that short game of his to kind of counter your long conversation about Victor <laughs> Hovland that had been saving him the last couple of weeks. You I don't say. You don't say. I, and then I talked to Chris Como, his swing coach, and he, I kind of asked him, and Chris was actually, honestly, a little surprised that he said that. And he goes, look, we had an hour se session on Wednesday, and the way he kind of said it to me, it was a reset. It, it lasted, you know, we, we just kind of went through the bag, and he got a little bit more comfortable. And keep in mind everything that he and Chris Como 
are doing is to save his back. We all know Jason Day has struggled with injury without throughout his entire career. So they're trying to build swing to try to keep that back and try to keep it as healthy as he possibly can. He did say that you're starting to see more and more confidence. Now, there, there, there was one thing that stood out from Jason Day's press conference today that I just thought was fascinating because someone asked him specifically, go back to those days when you were world number one. And let's consider that a 10 out of 10, that you were on top of the world and you were doing everything perfectly. How would you compare yourself now? And in one breath, he said, I'm close. And then he became a little sheepish. And he goes, if I'm being modest, it's a five, which leads me to believe that, oh, man, like there, he really thinks there's that much room to improve to get back to where he was the number one in the world. I, I think it's a fascinating idea of, of he has he had fallen so far. He had become very much an afterthought in this game. And he kind of compared to what John Rom and Rory and Scotty Scheffler are doing right now and said how I far mean, a, lot, a, a lot of people Rex thought that he was washed. You know, he could just focus on his family, focus on his health and like his best. He just kind of burned out. And I wonder, you know, I, I, in his heart of hearts, would he admit that? I Probably not, because I don't think that a player of that level is ever willing to admit that. But you're right. I think just from an injury point of view, forget about whether or not if you think you can play golf again, if you've lost your confidence. He had been injured. I met him when he was a 16-year-old. He had just turned pro in, in Adelaide, Australia. And he had something wrong with him then. And every time I have talked to him since in the 20-plus years, he has had something wrong with him as well. It's just sort of <laughs> how he is. So I, I am fascinated by the idea that he has not come full circle, but that he has been able to almost will himself back to being, if not a world-class player, then right there on the cusp. That was the Golf Week story, Golf Week cover uh, that never appeared, uh, unfortunately. I have the cover. I have that cover. Yeah. The alternate cover? Yeah. Uh, yeah bring that alternate. one out. That's definitely a collector's item. I, I agree with you. It's great to see the former world number one back in some form. Top 20 finishes in each and every start. Back inside the top 50, uh, looking to lock up a master's berth. It would be great. That'd be a great story. I mean, we're looking at Christian Bezadenhood, I think would be a fantastic story. I would relish the opportunity to write that one on Sunday. But kind of the Jason Day rebirth, uh, I'm with you, would be a good one as well. You and I, I might have to arm wrestle for that one, actually. I don't, I don't think you and I arm wrestle over stories very often, but we might have to arm wrestle for that one. Uh, we could both write the same thing uh, and see which one is better. That could be a little, that could be fun. We could do alternate angles, alternate angles. There's 1,400 two, two writers. words on, on yeah. yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> two writers, two angles. Uh, Rex, what I want to touch on quickly, uh, this isn't going to be too beefy of a podcast because quite honestly, there isn't all that didn't much finish. to talk about. Projected cut line right now is plus one. Again, uh, the afternoon wave is about halfway through the rounds have been excruciating long uh and that was even before you had the weather stoppage our friends at datagolf.com project 67 percent chance that that cut line is going to be bumping to plus two which would be very good news for folks like justin thomas who struggled to 73 uh they're so Friday. good at that they get that right every single time it's amazing yeah uh wizards uh, certainly, I think the PJ Tour would be wise ah. to, le to lean into the data golf model. When they're doing that churn, that retention rate, uh, yes. the, thousand, the thousands of models and simulations, uh, I'm sure data golf had some sort of say in that. But players who certainly do not look like they're going to be playing the weekend here, Matt Fitzpatrick, U.S. Open champion, not going to make it. Tom Kim has some uh, work to do as well. Rory. Roy McElroy, boy, that is the big one. Did not. You and I predicted he would both make the cut, thinking that 68 – 69 uh instead he's going the other way going to need an insane rally uh over his next eight holes now he does have about a 25 footer for eagle on the 11th hole but boy he's gonna have to come he's gonna have to come home in 31 uh if he wants to stick around for the weekend i am curious rex because i know data golf is at 67 percent bumping to plus two if conditions are easier win is more benign softer uh, the golf course is softer uh, I wouldn't be so sure right now. I think you're at what 60. Yeah. Th there's 67 players at plus one or better. You're going to be out here at 7 a.m. for the restart uh, to chase the cut line story that you were so interested in watching on Friday. Uh, I think we both have to be out here because I think we'll both have hits early in the morning. Do we not? I mean, the job will dictate that we're out here. Do we not? Uh, I don't know. I would think they would go to live coverage. I'm not in charge of those decisions. Uh, Jordan Spieth, we touched on him earlier. I actually want, so I apparently I walked and watched like the least interesting part of Jordan Spieth's round. I watched him for seven holes. He was battling toe hooks and then pushes uh, and then begged off to do our live from hit. And then he actually, if, if you folks haven't seen him, make sure you go to 
PJ Tour social. It is absolutely ridiculous what happened to Jordan Spieth on his 18th hole of the day. Two shots outside the cut line. Looks like uh, his foot slips. Uh, he sailed one way right, destined for the water. Instead, hits off a fan, I think his leg, kicked back in the fairway, and ends up chipping in for Eagle to right now at least make the cut on the number. He certainly will be safe when the cut is finalized on Saturday. It's it's mind-boggling to me, Rex, that a player of Jordan Spieth's golf IQ, uh, his intelligence, does not have a better record on this golf course. His best finish was his very first time. 2014, he said he was freewheeling, remember? Like, it was going, it was going great. He played well uh, at the Masters, obviously, uh, in the final group there. Has a chance to win the Players' Championship. Like, anything, any reason you could put your finger on this? Because Jordan Spieth has been playing well recently and for some reason he and a lot and a host of other players cannot quite get this place figured out i don't think there's one thing you would point to and say okay this is the whole and i mean of all people jordan speeds game because he seems when he's playing well to do everything well enough to be able to contend here i think it's the nature of the golf course until phil, phil mickelson won here he had an awful record which was at the time inexplicable and we kept trying to come up with reasons why he wasn't able to do it i, I just think it's one of those golf courses that it doesn't take a lot to get sideways it doesn't take a lot to as you pointed out make a double bogey i think it, it's the conversation he was having with greller as he walked to one of those greens today like it just happens i, I do want to point something out and somehow you were you were tweeting away a storm yesterday about jordan speed like you normally do because you're nope. so in the bag for him Nope. Yeah, however, I tweet, I tweet I, like once every three days. It was I, not me. Well, I, I don't know how I got pulled into this because I have I wanted to bring this up to you today, but, but it seems like a good time to do it. Why is there such vitriol on social media when it comes to, to Jordan Speed? Why? I mean, you're again, you're in the bag, so you're probably not the right person to ask. But <laughs> yeah, well, I, would, seem... I wouldn't ask me. But I'm sure you have felt it where every time and maybe this is just golf channel coverage and that's why I got tagged into it. But I was kind of taken the last two days sort of looking at the reaction of all of these things. And there's tons of social media clips and you're talking about what he did on the ninth hole. And he just seems to make people angry. And I, I don't he understand does? why. why? What, do, what do they say? This is why you don't read the comments. Obviously, like, do you look at the crazy person on the street corner in the eye? Of course not. You you keep your head you down do. and you keep walking. I kind of view the same thing with Twitter replies. I, I, I probably shouldn't be paying attention to what the egg says on, on Twitter. You're absolutely right. But I'm just amazed that the, the golden boy who uh, and look, I'm I'm not in the bag like you are, but I enjoy talking to him. I find him refreshing. He's certainly one of the media favorites simply because he will try if you ask him something he's not a media favorite just because he answers questions he's a media favorite because he actually gives a, a, an attempt to answer whatever question you ask but whew, the hatred it was real the last two days you guys need to dial it back talking to I you mean, egg i mean isn't that what american society is all about like we build up stars only to tear them down that's that's uh, true in sports movies entertainment politics whatever the case may be everything went so well for jordan spieth then he hits. Then he hits a little bit of a, a decline. Then he goes back up, and now he goes down. Now he's in the, you know, he's supporting the PJ Tour, uh, which is going to get the live bots going crazy as well. I haven't quite seen that vitriol. Uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not dismissing uh, your experience, uh, but I haven't quite seen that. Jordan Spieth remains, in, in my opinion, uh, in the top three most popular players on the PJ Tour. The pip standings bear that out. I think the fans uh, who turn out to see them bear that out. It's Tiger, Rory, and Jordan Spieth as the three most popular figures. On the PGA Tour, I don't think you had some fans out here today. How'd that go for you? Uh, they were not. They they were fans of my backyard. But they were not uh, fans of my content. We're, we're, look, we you and I, Rex, are happy are happy to take pictures with the folks. We love to hear more than people are tuned in to the Golf Channel podcast with Rex and Lav. It's very humbling. It's very flattering to think that people are paying attention to us, enjoying this fair content. What are you be doing the rest of the night, Rex? And what are your plans for? saturday's play uh i gotta go do a hit right now you've let this go on too long you said it wouldn't be a beefy blog and here we are sneaking up on 20 minutes it just as i expected it would and then uh first thing tomorrow morning we will we will both be out here you know exactly what's going to happen yep we will not do an emergency pod in the morning just stay locked with golfchannel.com we'll keep you updated with all the stories and we will reconvene on saturday night when they should uh they should be back on schedule by Saturday night, and then we spring forward. Rex, daylight savings time Ooh, that's is right. I forgot about on that. Saturday, so I'm sure they'll go split tees and threesomes to make sure that we are back on schedule for Sunday's final round. Thank you guys for listening. This edition of the Golf Channel podcast with Rex and Laugh. We'll do this again in like 24 hours, hopefully, after a very nice day at Deep Sea Sawgrass.